We're standing out here at Pioneer Square. There are 600 corporate lobbyists that are meeting behind closed doors with trade negotiators in San Diego on a trade deal that it will be far larger than NAFTA. So they're meeting in San Diego for the 13th round of negotiations on the Trans-Pacific Partnership, or called the TPP. This is a massive new international trade agreement um, that's being negotiated by 13 countries in the Pacific Rim. Already, this is the largest trade deal to be negotiated to date. However, it's going to get a lot bigger because it's being negotiated as a docking agreement, meaning that other countries can join on over time. This mammoth trade deal, um, like I said, is one of the biggest that we've seen. However, it's also un unique in that it's being negotiated in the shadows. Um, since negotiations began in 2008, uh, negotiating documents, uh, none of them have been officially released for public review. So why do you think that uh, trade negotiators want to keep this trade deal secret? What could they possibly be putting in this trade deal uh, that's in our, our interest um, that they don't want to let us, know, let us know about? Well, I'm going to tell you, um, you know, the little bit of uh, text that has been leaked has shown that this is a trade deal that will uh, put the corporate interest before the public interest. And, uh, you know, uh, this wouldn't be the first time that we've seen this. So the texts make it clear why corporations like Chevron are pushing on the national corporations the power to challenge any environmental or public safety policy that they see will be an impediment to their future profits. Um, already we've seen under existing trade policy, the Clean Air Act, um, parts of the Endangered Species Act, and the Marine Mammal Protection Act rolled back. If the TPP moves forward, this is going to threaten much needed uh, policies to promote uh, global protection of um, our resources and to combat global gl climate change. It's also going to encourage rip and ship resource extraction in each of the countries involved. It's going to lead to more drilling, mining, and deforestation, and that's uh, regardless of the wishes of the local community. If the leaked text, uh, if this moves forward, we also have seen that uh, the leaked text will make it uh, more, make it easier for powerful drug companies like Pfizer to push forward with um, with extending the life of drug patents, making it harder for people like you and me to buy affordable generics. And for poor people in countries uh, around the world that um, who face life-threatening diseases, this is essentially a death sentence. Today we're going to visit three more corporations who have been granted special privileges as um, official advisors in the TPP negotiations. These corporations want to see a massive trade deal because it'll make it easier for them to offshore jobs to wherever workers are most exploited and environmental regulations most laxed. Not surprisingly, these are the same corporations that abuse workers here in Oregon. Verizon, FedEx, and Walmart have been offshore at good paying jobs, busting unions, and destroying the middle class with substandard wages. Yay. We're here to tell these corporate bad guys that we've seen enough worker abuse and they can take their crappy corporate trade deal and flush it down the toilet. So, TPP, flush it down! TPP, flush it down! The Trans-Pacific Partnership 
has giant implications for working families right here in Portland, Oregon, as well as across the country. Today the negotiators are meeting in San Diego to finalize the secret terms of this agreement. The 1% has total access to all negotiating documents, while the 99% is shut out. This is not what democracy looks like. Why are we marching on Verizon? Over one year ago, communication workers and the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers started bargaining with Verizon on the East Coast. And that included one Verizon Wireless shop, because Verizon Wireless is very anti-union. But they have a contract. Oh, they went on strike for two weeks. They came back because there was a storm. And so they worked the storm. And Verizon has, at the time, Verizon had 100 take-backs. Now they have 70. Verizon wants to send all of its call center work to the Philippines. Technical work. Sales work, whatever. The union has given Verizon a lot of alternatives to outsourcing and they don't care. What does this do? It shuts down call centers, it puts hundreds of people onto unemployment and soon out of their homes. The ripple effect of sending these jobs overseas means that the community surrounding these workers, is, which is already depressed, gets even worse. Right. We demand that corporations like Verizon are not human, they do not have voting rights, and they certainly don't have the right to determine what our laws are going to be in this country or any other country in the world. Okay, so we want to shut down TPP and flush it down. My name's Ben Vetus, and I'm a business agent with Local One, Teamsters Local 162. And our local represents the UPS folks in the Portland metropolitan area. We have about 1,800 members right now. So I just want to briefly speak to you about the FedEx, uh, what's going on with FedEx, and as you know, uh, they're one of the official advisors to the Trans-Pacific Partnership negotiations that are taking place this week. Ooh. Over the years, CEO Fred Smith and the rest of the cronies have done nothing they can do, anything they can do to prevent their workers from having the same rights to organize as others in the industry. The regular FedEx Express employees continue to fall under the Railway Labor Act, unlike its competitors like UPS, which are under the National Labor Relations Act. By, by being under the RLA, Fed, FedEx Express employees can only become union with a national vote by every employee. Under the NLRA, employees can decide to organize on a terminal by terminal basis, which would give us the ability to organize in the big areas first and then, and then go out and filter out to the smaller ones once we have a contract. This ability to organize by area is what the company fears most and this difference is what enables them to keep a leg up on the competition. In early 2009, the House of Representatives passed legislation that was part of the Federal Aviation Administration Reauthorization Bill that would place FedEx employees performing the same work as UPS employees and, under, and others under the NLRB. In response to this initial vote, Fred Smith and other company spokesmen threatened to cancel a $10 billion contract with Boeing and destroy any members of Congress who voted for the bill. The FedEx ground drivers that we all see in the green bands are currently being misclassified by the company as independent contractors. And because of this, they receive no company benefits, overtime, sick time, insurance, or a company retirement plan. The drivers are responsible for the vehicle, gas, supplies, insurance, and everything else related to the vehicle. There have been lawsuits filed in several states challenging the, ICE, the independent contractors versus employee status of the FedEx ground workers, and in states where the employee status has been upheld, the company simply disagrees and pays for the fines. The arrogance of this company has no end and one can only imagine what advice they are giving to the U.S. negotiators and others on how to maximize profits at the expense of American and other worldwide workers. Right. 
These agreements need to stop, and I thank you for your time. A company like FedEx that uh, treats its workers like they do, it's not surprising that they're pushing for a trade deal that's a race to the bottom for all workers. And why is it that uh, this dirty corporation gets to see the negotiating text that's going to affect all of us, but people like you and me are barred from street reading the text. Or even, the, our the real, even our elected officials, thank you Madeline, are barred from seeing this text. Uh, you know, we're here to sing a strong message, no backroom deals for the 1%. TPP, flush it down! TPP, flush it down! TPP, flush it down! TPP, flush it down! TPP, flush it down. There's a victory in Massachusetts where the community rose up, had an organized rebellion, and pushed back a couple of Walmart stores and stopped them, which is what we need to do here in Portland because they're planning 17 stores, 12 of them are the stores that have already been occupied, so it's kind of a slip in where they just put in a neighborhood market and call it a nice little market, you know? So the other thing that's happening is there's a group on Highway 99 in Oak Grove in Milwaukee that's called No Oak Grove Walmart, Nogwal. We're having a demonstration on July 14th, Saturday, in front of the Walmart location. And we'll get you guys leaflets on that. We didn't get them ready today, but we'll have them in the future. And I just wanted to give you, you know, the, the heads up for that, that there's 17 coming to Portland. Jobs of Justice, UFCW, and lots of great folks like you guys. And the, the Fair Trade uh, group is working on this. So. That's about it. I just wanted to say one more time. What was that response? Stop the Walmart invasion! Stop the Walmart invasion! Stop the Walmart invasion!